All right, so this one is called False Testimonies. Um, testimony is, you know, somebody speaking about how they, they're, I don't know exactly what Christianity has made testimonies to be these days, uh, but it comes from the book of Revelation, uh, which isn't even in our dispensation. So really, you know, all these people getting up and giving their testimonies, there's really only uh, one certain thing that everybody should eventually say so we'll get to that in a second so false testimonies what do we hear from uh, christianity or from christians falsely so-called maybe they are i don't know uh i love god i love god that's a good one i love jesus jesus loves me these are good ones god loves me hmm Sound, sounds pretty heartwarming. I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. There's a big one, right? That's that's famous in Christianity. I was baptized. Mm, here's a big one. I repented of my sins. Ooh. Oh, that sounds pretty good. That's a pretty good person there, repenting of their sins. God changed my life. <laughs> I had an encounter with God. Wow, these are all things that we hear, right? God changed your life and you had an encounter with God. Sounds pretty rock steady, right? Pretty rock steady. What else? What else? I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe, let's add them all together. I love God. I love Jesus. I was baptized. I repented of all my sins. I accepted Christ into my heart. I believe in God. I went up to the altar and I said a prayer. Oh, that was a big one. Prayer. I prayed. <laughs> I prayed so I'm saved. Oh, how about I go to church every Sunday? I go to church twice a week. Ah, uh, those are some good ones. I con I confessed my sins. That's another big one. I confessed my sins. I go to church, right? I took the sacraments. I tithed. I tithed. These are all really, really common things we hear, right? I tithe 10%. I, you know, I you can go on and on and on about stuff like this. And this is pretty much what we hear. Um, along with, you know, your... Random uh, personal stories like uh, I was doing this and then this happened and then I went around the corner and I saw this and then this magic thing and then this thing in the sky and then and then some, something along those lines and I, and I accepted Jesus in my heart and then, you know, he, you know, you even hear uh, Jesus forgives me of my sins, you know, and, you know, that's that's even one that you hear and that's dangerous. Because uh, you need to, you need to know how how that process happens, and that's the thing that I'm getting at. I'm not saying this to put anybody down, uh, because uh, I, I'm saying this simply to help people. Because this is what you hear in Christianity. So let's take a look at how you are forgiven of your sins, how you're saved. What is the gospel of salvation? the word of truth that saves you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4 in the King James Bible. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel that saves you. We cannot go off of our feelings and uh, our life uh, quality, whether we cleaned up or not, atheists, atheists clean their lives up. Um, 
new age people who believe in ascended masters clean their lives up for the better. Um, there's lots of programs where people who do not believe the gospel of salvation clean their lives up and are better off for it. And so this is the gospel that saves. So let's look at another verse here. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So there are two things here that you have to do. Three things. You have to hear the gospel of your salvation, which I just read to you. You have to believe it, and you have to trust it. Once you do that, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Titus chapter 3, verse 5, King James Bible. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You can't be saved by any good work. And you can't add any good work to the pure gospel of salvation. Which is what Christ did for us. You see. And that is the only currency that God is accepting today. Is what Christ did for us. We are not allowed to add our works, repenting of sins and confessing sins, water baptism, and you know, saying a prayer. None of that, none of that will do it. It will not cut it with God. And so while he is offering this free gift of salvation today, by grace, through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Many people, whether it be for this reason or that reason, are not accepting it. They are not accepting it the way God wants them to accept it. They, they will add themselves inside the gospel of salvation. They'll say, I know about what Jesus did for me, you know, but I also have to do this, or I also got to do this, and I, but I can't do this. And it's like, when you try to tell people, look... No, that's wrong. You know, it, and it. you can only go so far. It's going to take that person and God to have them see the truth and believe the truth. And unfortunately, I think, in my personal opinion, that a lot of these um, people that are doing this, uh, that have been raised up in these American churches... Uh, they will be left behind in the rapture, and they will then have to go through that and deal with that and endure till the end and uh, refuse the mark of the beast uh, simply because they refused in their heart to believe and accept the gospel of grace how God wanted them to accept it as the free gift of grace through what Jesus Christ did for us, not what we do for God because none are righteous no not one for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God when you don't accept when you don't accept the free gift of salvation like this you're saying to God hey you know what Jesus Christ what he did for me that's not good enough for my sins I've got to give you something in return that's exactly what you're literally spitting in the face of God when you turn down the gospel of grace, the, the word of truth, even when you say, I need to prove that I deserve that, that's not what God wants either. God wants you to know that you can't deserve that. You'll never be good enough to deserve what he's offering you. That's how he wants you to see it. He wants you to see yourself for what you are, as a sinner. And... What you are is just a man or a woman who does not have anything to offer God for salvation, for forgiveness of sins. Nothing. But if you listen to somebody like Todd White, he'll tell you the exact opposite.
he'll say, the cross doesn't show how bad I am or that I'm a sinner. It shows how much I'm worth, how how valuable I am to God. The value was placed on my life was determined by the cost that was paid for me. See, the cross isn't just the revelation of my sin. It's the revealing of my value. Something underneath of that sin must have been of great value for heaven to go bankrupt to get me back. I got news for you. That's a direct inversion of the truth and what the, and then what the cross reveals. Okay, because the cross reveals exactly what Todd White will not tell you. Because that's the thing. People don't like hearing the hardcore truth of the, the state that humanity is in. A fallen sinful state, whether we like it or not. Read Romans chapter 7. That's the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I want to do good, but I can't even do good because sin is in my members. It's literally a virus that will not go away until, you know, we are in heaven. And that's just the way it is. That is just the way it is. So, if you don't accept God's free gift on His terms, and the terms are so good, and and the most craziest, gotta be mentally ill people say that, well, that's just too easy. Well, yeah, it's easy for us. It was not easy for Jesus Christ. Getting beat, beaten like that, and, and nailed to a cross, dying a horrible death. That, that every time I, I hear somebody say that, I go. They're looking at the wrong thing. They're not looking at the cross. When they say that's too easy, I say, you're not looking at the cross. First of all, you don't know what you're talking about. Second of all, you're not looking at the cross. If you think that was easy, you're looking at the wrong place. Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. Thank you.